All right, Lynn, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us today and good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. We are so happy to have you here with us, here with us today to talk about cell check and how optimizing your creative can impact conversion. Before we get started, we have a couple of housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being live captioned. If you want to access the captions, click the little closed caption icon in the bottom of the Zoom dashboard at the bottom of your screen. And then second, we will have time at the end for Q&A. So at any point throughout this, um, this conversation, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box, also in the Zoom dashboard at the bottom of your screen. All right, thank you again for joining us. We're so happy to have you here today. My name is Bridget Ling. I am the Director of Marketing at Razor. Razor is a marketing technology company. We're headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we leverage three things, behavioral science, our own configurable technology platform, and our awesome strategy and creative teams to influence consumer decisions in the financial services, healthcare, and consumer packaged goods industries. And I'm excited to introduce Lynn Neal, Razor's Global Practice Officer. Prior to Razor, Lynn spent 33 years at Procter & Gamble, leading their behavioral science activation for P&G brands and retailers. As I mentioned, Lynn now serves as our Global Practice Officer, and he specifically leads the Cell Check Division, applying behavioral science on behalf of our global clients. Lynn, thank you for being here, and the, the floor is yours. Oh, thanks a bunch, Bridget. Uh, and thank you guys uh, for joining our webinar today. We're going to have a fun one. This is one where you're actually going to play a role live and, and kind of you be the judge situation on a few creative pairs we have out there. Now, I recognize that you guys these days are, are having all of your marketing budgets increased, right? No, no, not true. It's probably the opposite. You're probably being expected to have a budget cut of 8%. 10%, and yet you've got to deliver growth of four or 5%. So the only way to do that is to actually become much more efficient and choiceful with the things we're doing right now. And creative is actually one of the untapped areas where we can see a lot of growth. I love this research by Google that determined that creative is actually driving 70% of a campaign's performance. Now think about that. When we spend all this time on media efficiencies and making the great buy, when it's actually our creative has a real opportunity to just get turbocharged and do a little bit more. And that's what we do at CellCheck. We utilize behavioral science to optimize creative so it drives more sales. Take the great work that you're already doing with your brand strategy, the great creative that you're getting from your agency, and let's just see if we can't add that little secret sauce. We do that for a lot of brands, more than 1,500 brands, and we do it across the world. I believe we're in more than 75 countries right now. Now, the reason we can actually have that span and impact over that many countries across the globe, regardless of the brand, uh, the cultural differences, et cetera, et cetera, is because as humans, we share some of the same fundamental wiring, just our human operating system and how our brain operates. Some of you might be aware of the terms of system one and system two thinking. This is really associated with some of the, the groundbreaking work done by Daniel Kahneman and his team. It first happened in the area of, of economics. He and his team won that Nobel Prize for economics in 2002. But what they were able to vet out is that our brains work in two distinctly different ways. System one is our fast, ready access based on our history, based on habits, things we've done or seen in the past real quick acting uh, memory and activation of our brains, whereas system two is kind of slow and laborious and it consumes a lot of energy, kind of like taking that, uh, that exam when you were in, in university. Well, what Kahneman and his team discovered was about 95% of our day in, day out activities happen over in this system one mindset. That includes shopping. And that's where CellCheck does its work. We apply behavioral science through the lens of the system one mindset to make sure that creative is working as hard as possible. So does applying behavioral science to creative work? That's an emphatic yes. A third party conducted a test. This was an A-B test versus control. And they tested nine categories with non-optimized creative. Just normal creative that we generate day in, day out. 
And then they tested that versus those nine categories utilizing optimized creative. And I'll share the results here. This chart on the right, you're gonna see the vertical axis has sales lift. And then you're gonna see our, our categories down there on the bottom. In 15 stores, they tested non-optimized creative across nine categories. And they measured that performance versus the control stores. And if you just kind of eyeball this, on average, you'd see, all right, we saw about a 6% lift across those categories. And that's kind of what we'd expect, right? If we're going to run some sort of performance marketing activation, we've plugged something into our forecasting. And we might think that on average, a 6% lift is okay. Well, in this test, they actually took the non-optimized creative and had CellCheck look at it to optimize it. And across those nine categories, they ran that in 15 different stores versus control. And the orange bars represent those same brands, same kind of assets you had available, same kind of claims, but the creative was just optimized to make sure it performed better in that system one mindset. Again, what we saw here is about a 30% increase on optimized creative versus non-optimized creative. How significant is that? It costs just as much to develop and create and produce and market non-optimized creative as it does optimized. So why don't we make sure it's working as hard as possible? What we're going to do is actually share a few of those pairs in this self check challenge. So we've actually blinded the brands in this case, but what you're going to see side by side is a non-optimized creative and an optimized creative. We're gonna give you a chance to take a look at it. And then we're gonna let you vote. We'll actually have something pop up on screen and you'll be able to click on it and cast your vote on which one you think won in store. And then we'll have the reveal. We're gonna talk about which one actually performed better in store, but importantly, we'll talk about the science behind it. Why the non-optimized lagged a bit and why the optimized performed so well. So here you go. Let's start with our first pair. Now, just so I can orient you a little bit, obviously the brand is blinded right here, but um, what you have here is a dishwashing liquid that you might use in the sink. The execution would be what we call a shelf blade or shelf talker. So picture it's about this big or so, and it's placed right in front of the product at the shelf. So the product that they're referring to is gonna be right there. The execution you see on the left was placed in 15 stores and then measured versus a set of 15 control stores. The execution on the right was placed in 15 separate stores and measured against those control stores. So take a moment and look at this one right here. This one's tricky. We find that about 50% of people choose one, 50% of the people choose the other one. So don't feel bad whichever one you choose right here. And I tell you what, uh, give you a chance to look at those. Bridget, why don't you put up our poll here and let's see if folks can cast their vote. All right, there you go. Which one do you think actually did better in market, A or B? I'll give you a couple of seconds to choose one. Three, two, one. Okay. Bridget, what are the results we're getting on this? Where do people cast their votes? Oh, okay. So this one I said, we, we kind of going about 50-50 on this. In this case, we're about 60-40 with this group. Well, let's take a look and see how this actually did in store. The winner is the one on the left. I think about 60% of you guys chose that, but don't feel bad if you chose the one on the, on the right. Uh, when we took a look at these through cell check, the one on the right scored a 25. So it was definitely in that zone that we said, this one needs to be optimized. The one on left was already in an optimized zone. And you will look at the results in store the one on the left had about a 200% increase in sales lift. Now let's peel the onion a little bit and kind of understand what's going on here. Let's talk first about the one on the right on the non-optimized. It is definitely easy to choose that one. You guys know it's rare as a brand when you're able to use the word best. It is a bold superiority claim. However, in this case, it's kind of used in this in this puffery situation where it's called the best orange. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean the truest orange, the orangiest orange, the longest lasting orange, the faintest orange? You're not quite sure. What they do on the right is they do a couple of things real well. It is definitely a category specific benefit that would be desired that you're gonna have long lasting fragrance. But really an important thing they did from a cognitive registration here is that they included the package on this execution. 
Now you don't have to do it every time, but just recognize the cognitive link that the package provides. Even though this is adjacent to the product, what this helps the, the shopper do is recognize that this bold um, shelf talker that we have is specifically talking about this, this product right here, including that 40% more offer. And so it helps the brain process when I'm looking at this and they're talking about this benefit, they're talking about this package, it's going to be right here. And it just closes that cognitive gap a little bit better. And it made a really big difference in the performance of this execution in store. Let's take a look at another pair. Similar kind of situation, the execution on the left, the shelf talk was executed in 15 stores. You can take a look at all the claims you have there in the visualization. The execution on the right was executed in 15 different stores versus the control. You can take a look at the visualization and the claims. I'll give you a moment to consider them. Choose which one you think performed best in store. Bridget, let's put up that vote. All right, we'll give a few seconds here. Three, two, one. Okay, Bridget, how did we turn out? Okay, we kind of had an 80-20 rule on this one. So definitely a lot of waiting to that one on the right. Well, let's take a look and see which one actually performed better in store. The winner is the one on the right scoring a 31. So this one was optimized for performance. In store, it was a 100% increase in sales left. Now, let's talk about this one uh, a little bit. First, starting with uh, the execution A on the left. It really has some enticing communication here. The $2 savings is there. It also has this number one claim at the bottom. And again, when you can make that kind of superiority claim, it can make a big difference. But the one on the right is the one that actually was optimized and one in store. Now, some of you may have been proud pet parents yourself and jumped right to this one. You can say, boy, happy smiley dog. In the terms of what we're looking at from a, from a behavioral science standpoint, this is a great example of benefit visualization. This is in benefit visualization. And you might not, might not think of it that way, but this is happy, healthy dog. And it's implied that it's happy, healthy dog because they're eating wise blend. The other thing that we did here is that, that's a little more subtle is we included this front shot of the human face. Now, again, the, the dog is the hero in this one, and that's clear. And that gets a lot of attention in aisle and helps it stand out. But the human face also helps. We are instinctively drawn to look at people in the face. Think about when you're walking on the sidewalk. That's just where you glance. It actually helps kelp our, uh, catch our eye. Now, because this is setting up the benefit, you know, proud pet parent that's got a happy, healthy dog, it does a lot to just draw more viewers into the piece and then consider the offer from Dog Wise Blend. So it's a nice little one-two punch that they've done here. And certainly the results carried out in store. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, let me set up the context of this one. These are actually like a, a poster that goes on a cooler right here. We've just shown the execution up top so you can see it a little more clearly and the pictures below show it in context. The one on the left was executed in 15 stores and measured against 15 control stores. The one on the right was executed in 15 different stores and, it, and measured against control stores. So pause a moment, take a look at them, and determine which one you think performed best. Okay, Bridget, let's give them a chance to vote. There we go. Had a chance. Okay, how did our results look on this one? No, this one was a little, little tough, right? About two thirds went with the one on the right and a third went with the one on the left. Well, let's actually take a look at what these did in store. The winner is the one on the right, okay? It was optimized to a 32, whereas the one on the left was non-optimized in store about a 33% lift uh, over our sales rate with the one on the right. So here's what's happening. Okay, the one on the left, it seems small, but on everything we're trying to do, we're just trying to aid that mental processing of how easy it is to, to notice something and register it. Our system one brain is constantly trying to simplify our workload. So just stacking those two lines of copy 
make it a little harder for us to cognitively register. It doesn't make it impossible, just makes it a little bit harder. Importantly on this, even though the one on the left is grammatically correct, we know that we should spell out the word two, we should spell out the word one. In this performance marketing execution and finding that straightest cognitive path, it actually works harder when we utilize the number two and the number one. We're doing a literal count here. When I buy two of these products, I'm going to get one free. And our brain is quicker to register that two get one than we are registering all of the copy. Now, there's one other thing done here to make it work harder. So you've got this big cooler of products right there. This offers likely only good for certain ones. So that little band, that little border you see across the bottom, there could have been other ways that we would execute this band. But one of the things that it does is it cues us and tells us that this offer I'm reading right here is good on these products that you see right there. So it makes that, uh, that pathway easy to follow. And then the shopper is certain when they open the door, they know which products they can pick out to get the two for one deal. So great execution, optimized for in-store performance with the one on the right. We've got one more to look at here. Now, let me set this one up a little bit. Obviously, we've blinded the brands. I'll just call out that the one on the right was a comparison. And that brand you see in the white package, picture that that was a premium category leader that the client brand wanted to compare themselves to. So I'll let you take a look at these two executions. The one on the left was executed in 15 stores, and then the results measured against control stores. The one on the right executed in 15 different stores measured against the 15 control stores. Take a look, which one do you think performed the best? Give folks a chance to vote. Okay, three, two, one. Which one did our participants believe performed the best in this case? All right, this one's kind of tight, kind of 70-30 on this one. You had a leaning toward the right on A. Well, let's take a look at what actually happened in store. It is the one on the left. Now, there's still some opportunities to make this one even better, but as is, it performed about 60% better in sales lift than the one on the right. Now, this one's a, a little bit surprising in some cases. A lot of times when we can do a side-by-side -side superiority comparison and visualization, that's really good. The challenge on this one is that you weren't visualizing a benefit per se. You're just trying to make a comparison to a competitive foil. Now, here was the tricky part about the one on the right. That competitive foil was the category leader, and they're giving it visual prominence at a parity level. So that's the brand that might end up registering fastest in the viewer's mind. And it can actually cause a little bit of cognitive confusion. The person can get there if they spend enough time with it, but right out of the gate, we're having to sort of sort ourselves mentally on what this execution is trying to communicate. So the left execution does a couple of things. Well, the first thing it does is it sort of simplifies it. It's still going that it's a preferred taste and they're not giving that leadership comparison brand any, any airtime. They're really focusing on their own brand. But then there's one other thing that they do well right here is when they're talking about preferred taste, they provide a proxy for taste visualization. They've got this warm cup of coffee. And if you can see it close enough, they've got the steam coming off of it. So they're associating this preferred taste and this check mark to a real coffee visualization that gives a little more experiential uh, nature to the execution. So a 60% improvement in sales lift over the one on the right. So now it's easy to take a look at, at these and, and when you look at them side by side and go, boy, I think that one's better. I think one's not. Let's talk with you a little bit about the process of how we get there because we don't start with these side by side. You start with some creative and some communication objectives and then we have a process to see how we might optimize it utilizing behavioral science. The first thing we do at cell check is we end up having an AI enabled heat mapping where it can see where that instinctive eye is going to go in that first second or two. Think about it like when you glance to the right and look back real quick. You don't necessarily know what you're registering with your eyes, but you almost have that searing, that kind of heat map that comes out. We generate that and then we send it over to our panel of cell check experts. 
Now, this pamphlet is really sort of this, a secret sauce to how we, we do what we do. They're all experts in the field, more than 20 years of experience each, whether it's on the brand side, agency side, services side, or retail side. And each of them has risen in their organization to where they're, they've been leading others in the area of performance marketing and optimization. Most of them are in the consultative portion of their career right now. When they come over to CellCheck, we train them deeply in behavioral science. You know, what is the actual science behind the things that they've learned that have worked in market over the years? That group of panelists captures things in the framework of the four C's. And they reach a consensus across each of these four C's that includes some recommendations and some scores. Now, the four C's kind of mimic the, the cognitive science of how we first notice a piece of, of performance marketing communication. That's command. How well does it draw us in? The second C is connect. And that's recognition. What's the brand? What's the category? We'll pay more attention to someone speaking to us when we know them in their context. The third C is convey. How well does the piece tell the story? Is it clear, single-minded, compelling? The fourth C is close. Now, close is, is rather instinctive on some part. Think about, does it, does it have a compelling closing element? That could be great benefit visualization like we talked about, or it could be social proof. They could be an endorsement. So some kind of closing element that might, might make that the product to choose. But close is also a product of how well we did with our first three seats. If we didn't do a great job on command, our sales funnels literally got smaller. Less people are going to see our execution. I'll take you back to the pet food one we had where we said that, that disruptiveness of having the dog and the woman in there drew more people in. So it had a higher command that would end up getting to a stronger close. Hey, so we utilized that process and turned that around in two days. I think it'd be helpful to actually show you a little case study that we have right here in the process we went through and working with a client, Scott's Miracle Grow. And Scott's actually had a, a really ingenious execution that they had already executed at Home Depot. Now, this is a really clever merchandising device. So it, it, it facilitates an adjacency of putting the Scott's Miracle Grow right there by the plants. I'm going to let you take a look at this execution. This actually ran in store at Home Depot, but Scott's was saying, boy, we want to anniversary this, but how do we make it better? How can we optimize it on our behalf and on Home Depot's behalf? So the question to you on this one, instead of having a side-by-side -side optimize, non-optimize, take a look at it. What would you do? What would you do to try to improve this one and make it better? You might see some things that you feel okay about. I'm generating a little list of things that you might consider, but it's a little bit trickier when you're working from scratch. So we send this through a process. Go through that three-step cell check process we talked about, where we provide the heat maps, we go through our panelist, expert panelist group, apply the behavioral science, and then make some really um, direct recommendations on this. So we broke it down by the four C's, and then on our summary page, we'll make sure we'll provide Scott's with, boy, if we're in your shoes, Here's some things we would go do to make this work harder. I've extracted a few of those that we saw in this execution. The first is, you know, it, 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 it's got great graphics. It worked in store the first time, but there's some opportunities to really refine the hierarchy of communication. And we specifically rec recommended that we prioritize the headline because that's where our benefit communication is. That phone and hand image, that's where we're gonna give our benefit visualization. And then we want that strongly and clearly associated with Scott's Miracle Grow. So let's give that logo some priority. You remind that we have some graphic leaves and everything around there that we're adding context, but they're probably pulling us away cognitively from the things that we need to focus on for this execution. The second point is if you're going to use that single image through the phone, it really no, needs to show audacious, incredible growth, the kind of growth you can't get without utilizing Miracle Grow. So you really want to be a little eye popping for the viewer. A third point is a really important one on this one from just our mental processing. Recall it had used the term post word. Now, the insight is that, boy, you're going to have growth that you're so proud of, you want to show others. And post was a very direct play on, you know, Instagram or, or Facebook or something. They were, they were going to put it out there for others to see. But you might want to just share it with your family around the table. You might have a group that's on your text stream that you want to share it to. So this broader term of share worthy, it's a little clearer on the front end, and it's more inclusive of those sharing moments. So it just kind of aids that 
how, how I might be so proud that I'm going to share this with others. And then finally, there were just some, some practical things here on, on legibility. One of the things we know in cell check is that, that some of the white text can inherently be a little harder to read when there's low contrast and gets smaller. There's an effect called halation where the text glows a little bit along the edges because it's reflecting light. So we recommended we strengthen that to a higher contrast copy so that that call to action pops through. The result is an optimized execution that you see right here. You see the bold title, clear branding, clear call to action, and then look at that benefit visualization. It's helpful to see it even side by side, the before on the left and the after on the right. And guys, this ends up being, you know, kind of a, a two-way win here. So, you know, Scott's can help increase some sales by optimizing their creative. But when they're sharing this with Home Depot, Home Depot sees a recognition of, of Scott's working to move the needle and Home Depot realizes the benefit of higher sales per square foot. Nothing has changed on the profile of this. It's just working harder in the place it is. That big lever we talked about in that Google study of just making our creative work harder, leveraging behavioral science to get it there is a great lever to pull and make a real difference, especially when we have lower marketing budgets. You guys did a great job participating uh, in our side-by-side. -side. We do know that creative matters out there and optimizing it can make a real difference. Uh, if you care to talk with us a little bit more, just hit me up. I'm Lynn at cellcheck.com. That's L-Y-N-N -N at cellcheck.com. We'll make sure we can help you out. Bridget, if we have a little time left, I, I think we can take some Q&A if you have any out there. Yeah, we do, Lynn. Thank you. Um, we have several questions right now in the queue, so um, let's get to these. So the first question is, we're moving a lot of our marketing support online. Does Cell Check the process work on digital ads or with animation? Oh, absolutely. Good. Uh, absolutely, yes. As a matter of fact, about 40% of our business globally these days is working in digital. That's a new frontier that you have out there. It works um, with banner ads works with mobile. We're actually doing quite a bit of work in social right now. And yes, we can work with animation. You know, what we do is get a, a link from the client that shows how it works. Our panelists go through that end to end. We've even done some work on uh, pre-rolls or bumpers, you know, little short video vignettes that, that lead in there. So wide open to digital in all of its forms. Awesome. All right. What C seems to be the biggest challenge for the marketers that you work with of the four oh. C's? <laughs> well, great. Well, well, our, I'd say the two that are kind of bookends and big anchors are command and close. Okay, so those, those have to be there. The biggest challenge remains convey. And this is one of the things that happens in a lot of organizations. It's almost like creating the Mona Lisa, right? You can imagine people going around saying, this is great. We love it. Now, if we can just add and put in our URL or put something else and something else. And all of a sudden that convey can become a little bit burdened and it will end up lowering close in particular. So, so command and close, vitally important. Convey is where we find people have a lot of challenge. Okay, great. Um, can you talk about what's in the report, how long it takes to get back and do the panelists ever talk to the shoppers? Just a little okay. bit about the process of the report. Great, let me start with the, the process right there. We, we have those three steps we talked about. You hit send you know, on a, on a little portal that we have, only takes about five minutes to submit, then our process starts. So we get the heat mapping, it goes to our panelist group, You know, picture at least four sets of eyes, taking a look at your creative, reaching a consensus in the four C's, and then they capture it in our cell check report. That's usually about you know eight or nine pages that we have that include the heat map output, it includes a detailed page analyzing the four C's so you know exactly you know, where things are working, where opportunities lie. It includes a summary page. We're able to index it against our global database of like creative. So you kind of know where you stand with other kind of tactics around the world. And then specifically, we'll, we'll give you some action steps on what you go do next. That whole process works within two business days, um, you know, 48 hours. So once you hit send and we get started, you're getting that report back in your hand um, within a real quick time. That's great. And we've got a couple questions about price. What does it cost? Uh, Sellcheck works on a subscription model. So price varies a little bit as you, as you get bigger. You can imagine some of the, the bigger clients we have out there, like some of the PNGs and others are doing quite a bit. I'd say that, you know, as a rule of thumb, our average price lands at around $2,500 or so, depending on subscription size. So we'll, we certainly can do something, you know, right size for you on there. So, so I think that that leads to a 
you know, question I'll put back to the group is, you know, think about any other kind of research you might do that can turn around in two days, cost $2,500, can grow the execution by 10 to 30 percent, and is immediately actionable with clear recommendations. Uh, hopefully, CellCheck has a, has a fit for you. Okay, great. We, uh, we've got a few more questions that have come great. in. Um, which are the top placements that are currently driving more to conversion? SEO, Google search, um, that's probably, yeah, referring to uh, digital placement of these. Yeah, well, I, I got to say it's, it's, it's a big, you know, it depends on that, on what your brand is and what you need and what the purchase barrier is at that moment. We still see a lot of executions, you know, at retail. And, and a lot of clients are working with CellCheck to make sure some of their big bets in store, whether it's off-shelf merchandising or in caps work. We are doing a lot of work uh, in the digital space. Uh, certainly SEO is a place to start. We're doing a lot of work right now with product detail pages. And we have another uh, capability because brands are trying to, to augment their digital storefront. And we have an optimization process that help those deliver. So we'll really kind of meet the brand where they are, make sure we understand uh, the, the purchase barriers at that moment and ensure that we get more in your clicked basket or in your physical basket. Sure. I love this question. When working with a brand, do you find the creative teams are welcoming of the suggestions provided by CellCheck's behavior science recommendations? Oh, that, that is, that is a, a super question right there. And, and I'll say, yes, there, there might be a little nervousness or everything on the front end, but, but what you recognize and, and what the agencies end up recognizing is we're not a creative group. You've, you've got you know, strong brand strategy. You've got a strong creative team. What we can do is add that little secret sauce. How can we take the great assets, the great creative skills you have and add behavioral science to make them work a little harder? As a matter of fact, uh, we, we've really synced up well with a number of creative teams on our leadership brands. And, and I'll, since we'll go ahead and be provocative with that question, I'll be provocative right back. A lot of times when we'll, when we'll be conferencing on an execution, you can see the creative groups nodding because the brand might be the ones that are adding all of those extra things they wanna say. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times you can refine it and add some behavioral science to make it make it work better. And I'd say some of our clients that have worked with us the longest, you know, year on year, whether it's PNG or or Mondelez, have actually just seen their overall capabilities grow sure. throughout, both on the marketing teams and creative side. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that while a lot of our brands are are big global brands with. Uh, in-house creative teams. If your brand is not a big global brand with an in-house creative team, we do have agency services that can take action on the recommendations that CellCheck provides. So, uh, so don't worry, we can offer that as well. But we've got we another another well. good question that if we send you two versions of our creative, will you do an A-B comparison like you did today and tell us which one performs better? Oh, super, uh, super question on that. Uh, we definitely work a lot with versioning. A number of brands are utilizing us at the, the key visual stage right now, and they're just trying to find their path, basically they have. So they might have a version A, B, or C. Depending on how differentiated they are, we might even be able to conduct that in one report where you have, boy, here's our, our version A, here's our version B. We're just looking at this little tweak, and we want to make sure we're efficient on the report. So you might be able to get a point of view within two days all in one report on your two versions. Great. Um, let's see, last question. Do you work with agencies? Oh, we absolutely work with agencies and, and, you know, we, we can discuss sort of the business model on how we work with agencies, but, but the short answer is yes, absolutely. And then welcome the opportunity to talk about it. All right. That is, we've reached the end of our questions. So thank you everybody for oh, uh, contributing in such great questions. If you think of anything after the webinar, you want to get back in touch, um, please reach out to Lynn. His email address is right here, lynn at cellcheck.com. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We will be sending a link via email to the recording of this webinar. We really appreciate it. It was fun, Lynn. Thanks uh, Thanks to thanks to you for putting together this great way to, to test our creative optimizing talent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bridget. Thanks to everyone that joined today. Thanks. Enjoy your day.